Here we are, the final step of the first phase of the build. All that was left to do to complete the shell of the house was to seal it up. That meant three tasks needed to be completed. Caulking around all of the trim, installing the water heater, and building little doors for the storage area. I started with the doors. To make the doors, I simply cut out rectangles from 3 quarter inch plywood, leaving about an 8 inch gap on all sides, and notched out a little area where a latch could go. I used a piece of 1x4 to reinforce the edge where the hinges would attach. The hinges I used are pretty small and they are a type that doesn't need to be countersunk, which made installing them quite easy. The latches are just simple gate latches that accept a padlock. These doors are nothing fancy and, I'll admit, could have been better thought out. I laid down some weather stripping behind them along the bottom just to make sure water doesn't get blown in. So far, no problems, and it's been a handy storage area for tools. Next, I fixed the water heater into place. I'll have a full video going over the water heater installation, testing, and operation during phase 2 of the build series. For now, I just wanted to attach it to the house in order to fill the hole. I caulked behind the side and top flange of the water heater, screwed it down in place, then caulked around the flange and filled in any gaps. I had to wait for the caulk to dry before attaching the front panel. Speaking of the panel, it had to be purchased separately, something I didn't know when I bought the heater. I later attached a piece of weather stripping above the water heater to keep rain from getting behind the door panel. It can be flapped out of the way if the door needs to come off to get at the unit itself. Finally, the whole house needed to be caulked between the siding and the trim. We initially used a caulk that dries clear, and it looked great at first once it dried. There are plenty of videos on YouTube demonstrating how to effectively apply caulk, and I recommend practicing a bit if you've never done it before. This caulk was really easy to work with and cleaned up easily with water. Too easily. I'd love to say that we officially finished the exterior of the house in mid-October, three and a half months since the start of the build, 426 hours spent working on it, 125 of which I was working alone. But, even though we left the caulk to cure under the tarp for two weeks, we still had a massive failure once we exposed the house to the November rain. It was heartbreaking to see it goop all over the siding we worked so hard on. The more rain that hit it, the worse it was, so it was really bad on the short side of the house where the water from the roof was running down the wall. So back on went the tarp. At this point, we had moved the house from the backyard to the driveway and had returned the scaffolding to the rental company. I had to climb up on the roof using a rickety ladder to get the tarp back on. I had no choice but to remove all of the caulk from the house before applying new stuff. It was a painstakingly tedious process. Some of it was so wet it had to be wiped off, while some was semi-solid and could be more easily peeled off. The weather was really bad. At one point, while working under the tarp, the wind picked up and nearly blew the tarp right off. This was when I finally just went out and bought a 10-foot A-frame ladder. It's become an indispensable tool since then, as I can easily reach and get on the roof using it. I also discovered how badly the tarp had been riddled with holes, as water was still flowing down the roof and onto the siding. I figured out a way to rig a gutter to the fascia, and that solved the problem. Once all the bad caulk was removed and the surface was dry and clean, it was time to reapply. I wasn't messing around this time. I bought a product called Quad. It's branded under LePage in Canada and OSI in the States. This stuff is way harder to work with, but I'd actually used it before when caulking around the wheel wells. I knew it was good because the wheel well caulking was solid and it held up perfectly. It's a thicker type of caulk and you can't really just nicely smooth it out with your finger because it will just get all gummed up. It's all in the application, using the nozzle to smooth it as you go. I didn't get any footage of applying this stuff around the trim because we were also dealing with another problem which caused us to suddenly relocate the house after removing the old caulk and before applying the new stuff. It was a crazy few days, full of drama and uncertainty, and couldn't have been happening at a worse time. The tiny house struggle is real, but that's a story for another day. All's well that ends well. We completed the exterior, found a new spot to park the house, and allowed ourselves some time to relax and focus on other things. And so, we've reached the end of what basically amounts to the first season of the Rookie Roost build series, or as I'm calling it, Phase 1. 
Phase 2 will focus on the inner workings of the house, from plumbing, electrical and propane, to appliances and vents, to insulation and the kitchen sink. 